everybody, welcome back. My name is Dr. Patricia Kalanicki, and this is a brief video talking about what needs to be in your EdTPA video clips for secondary mathematics. All right, let's get started. So just some general goals of the video clips. The EdTPA is mandating you to have these video clips because they want to see are you helping guide your students to developing understanding in those three key areas? I like to call them CPP, conceptual understanding, procedural fluency, and problem solving. I highly would recommend some of my other videos where I go more in depth about how to start, what kind of lessons would be more engaging for EdTPA, questioning techniques that EdTPA is specifically looking for, again, tips and suggestions on questioning, and also assessments specifically focused on those three uh, components, conceptual understanding, procedural fluency, and problem solving. All right, so when it comes to your video clips, your instruction commentary is specifically looking for these components. Where in your video are you promoting a positive learning environment? Now this could consist of using polite language, using your students' names, demonstrating that, look, a lot of students are participating in your class. Obviously, you've developed a positive learning environment. Um, maybe on the side, if it's at the beginning or end of class, you're asking about how someone's weekend was, how, were their, how was their sports game, if they're wearing a particular jersey. Um, are you, how are you engaging students in learning? Again, I'll mention a few examples in the next couple slides. How are you engaging them with concepts, fluency, and reasoning? Again, CPP. Where in the video are you showing links to prior knowledge and assets? And the assets I'm speaking about may be developed on your student survey. Again, I have a video on how um, you would design a student survey to best find out about some of those assets. Where in the video are you deepening students' learning um, by asking follow-up questions, having students dig deeper, putting the onus on them to explain something or to figure out something, and decide if a student's answer is right or wrong. Again, my video on questioning has a lot of good tips um, and suggestions on how to develop those kinds of skills and questioning when recording your video. And then finally, how are representations used in your instruction? So we're talking about visualizations. We're talking about if you're using graphs, are you using visuals? Uh, do students have access to these throughout class? And how are you using them and how are they using them uh, to support their learning? So again, you using visuals, but also maybe your students using visuals or creating visuals. All right, so in my humble opinion, I think your video really should probably maybe some direct instruction. I know other videos have said no direct instruction, but I think in I think direct instruction can be good if it has the following. Deep, higher order questions. They need to be in there. Again, my questioning video will be really helpful with that. Engaging students using their names, interests, preferences, again, from your student survey. I have a video on that. An introduction of a lesson, maybe a good short video clip to show. Again, those things that need to be mentioned in your instruction commentary, like tying in previous knowledge, talking about misconceptions. You can even talk about um, a previous assessment from the, the, the previous day and how you're going to you know, build upon that today. Or maybe even quickly assessing a student with an entrance ticket to see where they're at in terms of what they know about a topic that you are going to introduce. Um, another possible uh, video would be maybe a closure of a lesson, having students summarize their learning, maybe an exit ticket and then a share out. Connect why this is important in the bigger scheme of things in your unit as a whole and how it connects to real world concepts. Again, putting more onus on the students speaking and less on you speaking and you just being the facilitator of the discussion. Your video should also demonstrate strategies that you mentioned in your planning commentary. I'm assuming in your planning commentary, there's some opportunities for partner or group work. Emphasis on students discussing concepts independent of teacher guidance. So you may want to consider posting up some probing questions on your smart board and having students work with a partner. And then once they're done, have them work through those questions. This is also a great time to put in some of your language supports. And again, I have a video on language supports that may be helpful with that. Um, debriefing a group or partner activity, yes, even though it is kind of direct instruction, the focus is more on you and the students being in their seats, but it's a great opportunity for you to engage them in discussion, particularly in how they completed work in their groups. What did your group come up with? How did you begin to attack this problem? Why did you start this way? What do you think about that person's strategy? Do you think that you know was a good strategy? Why or why not? Again, having 
a more facilitated discussion with the focus on student work and student thinking. Again, just some brief uh, tips on what should be included in your EdCPA videos, uh, specifically for secondary math. Uh, here are some links to some other EdCPA videos you may be interested in, as well as my subscription page if you need to. Hope this video was helpful. Looking forward to seeing you soon.